Hello, this is Jim McKeith, Developer Evangelist for Rim Objects Software. Today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Android application development using our latest Oxygen for Java. After you've installed the Android SDK, you need to come in and create an Android Virtual Device or AVD. You can do this through the Android SDK Manager. You just hit New to find your device. You can choose different API levels depending on what version of the Android platform you want to target. Be aware of the screen size because some of these screens will be quite large. I had to downsize this one to 400 just so I could get it to fit inside the screencast. Once you're done, you can start it from here. I've already launched mine because it takes a few seconds for it to start up. And let's go ahead and develop an application for it. Go into Visual Studio, new project. Right now we just have one template in here. This is the beta. When the release comes out, we may have more. I'll go ahead and leave the default name. And here's our Android application. Right now it has one activity called main activity. An activity is a single unit of work or a single thing that a user can use. The activity defines the screen. Now the screen is actually defined in here in the layout. So this main.xml defines the screen as layout. Now you'll see we have tags here, a linear layout. We have two of these nested. Linear layouts have either a horizontal or vertical layout. This one also has gravity, center horizontal, which means that the controls placed on it are going to go into the middle. So layouts control the way controls that go on them are laid out. And we have a button on here. Now the button, I'm going to point out the ID is has this prefix on it here and then my button. So the button's actually called my button, but this prefix lets it know that we are using an identifier that we're going to reference in a certain way. So I'll show you how that works. This is how you're generally going to add identifiers to your controls. The text though has this other prefix on it here. And this means we're going to look up the string in this strings.xml file. So right here is my button text, right there, my button text. So that's how we reference it between those two files. The width and height say wrap content, so they're going to be just as big as it needs to be for this text that it got out. Also in here, you're going to notice we have another one here that we use in our code. I'll show you how that works. And also we have this app name. This is the name that's going to be displayed in Android. This is what will be displayed on screen as far as the application's name goes once it's installed and running. In here, I will tell you, I'm not going to get into designing anything here, but I'll tell you that there is a good uh, tutorial that's linked to from our Oxygen Language Wiki. If you go to wiki.oxygenlanguage.com and search for the Android Primer, it follows along a lot of the same stuff we're talking about here, and links to a tutorial on doing the layout using XML for Android. Also, there's another tool called Droid Draw that is a WYSIWYG tool for designing this. Some people don't like it because it's kind of limiting in what you can do. I prefer just doing XML. It actually was a design decision, from what I understand, to do it this way because of all the different layouts possible with Android. It's better to have people designing it in XML than they're going to get a layout that's going to be more useful on more different layouts. Let's go back to the mainactivity.pass file here. In our onCreateHandler, we have this content view get set to R layout main. Okay. Resources layout main. That's attaching this XML file to the content view of this activity. So it means this activity is going to use the layout that's defined in there. We're also setting up an event handler in here. So right here, this prefix R.ID corresponds to this right here, okay? And so then after that is my button, my button. So that's how we identify the view. Now, I used the word controls earlier, that's what we're used to, but in Android, a button, a layout, whatever is called a view, okay? So we're going to identify the view, we're gonna get the ID of that view, and we're gonna call find view by ID. That's gonna return the view, and then we're gonna cast that view as a button and store it in a local instance here called my button. Now, this is just local within this method, but I could persist this in my class as a field, field member, 
and then I could have access to it later. So once I have a My Button reference, then I'm going to set the On Click Listener, and I'm going to reference Button On Click, which is defined right here, and set that to the On Click. The inline interfaces is the method that Java uses to assign handlers or listeners, so th this is the syntax for setting one of those up. In our on button, our button on click, we're past the view that called this. Inside here, we're going to increment this counter, and then we're going to take the view, cast it as a button, and access the text property. And we're going to set that. And here we're going to say wide string dot format. So this is going to format a string. We pass it in a string, a formatted string, and the integer. Now the integer we got there. The formatted string, of course, comes from here. My button text two. That's the formatted string. And here's how we get it. R dot string and the name. My button text two. So the R for resources, string, and we're already accessing it strings, and that gives us that string back. One note about these is sometimes if you go in here and add a new string, or go in here and add a new control, and then come here and try and access it with the R dot right away, it might not be there. So what you need to do is usually save or try and compile, and then it'll be there, because those are generated behind the scenes by a tool that generates these other files that exist behind the scenes, and sometimes those files haven't been generated yet. We're also going to add a little code here to do a pop-up. Pop-up's called toast. So like toast pops up out of the toaster, that's what we use in Android. So we're gonna say if count is greater than two, then I'll just paste that code in there. I'll format this so we can see it all on the screen. We're going to use the toast class and we're going to call the class method on it called make text. And this is going to return a toast object with these initialization parameters. So we're going to pass the application context, some text to be displayed, and then the length of the toast how long I want the toast to be displayed for. There's length short and length long is only two options. And those are defined by the user of the Android device for how long they want their different toasts to appear. And then we're gonna take the result of that and we're gonna call show. So this is just a really simple inline way of doing a toast show. You could take that object and do more work on it later and then call show when you're done. Since Java is garbage collected, the object gets freed when it goes out of scope here. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and build our app. And it build, built successfully. So it's saying that I have my count lowercase instead of uppercase, which is kind of nice if you like to have everything consistent. So it will compile here. This is just a warning, but I like to be consistent. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and adjust the identifier and use the proper case. So watch this. Pretty cool. There's spell checker, all sorts of great little features in there. Very useful with the fix it utilities. So I'm going to go ahead and start debugging. This is going to deploy it to my Android emulator that I started earlier and let us debug it. Actually, I'll put a breakpoint in here. Breakpoint right there. And here it is running. There's our button that says click me. I click it. And here's the breakpoint. And I can hit run or continue. Pause back up here. One click. Actually, I'll turn that breakpoint off so I don't keep popping that up each time. Two clicks. And now when I click it again, count will be greater than two. And we get the Hello World Toast. There we go. Short introduction to creating and debugging Android applications with Oxygen for Java. Until next time, this is Jim McKeith with Theorem Object Software. Goodbye.